Everybody. Welcome to Atlanta Live. My name is Kay, and I'm so excited about this show. I believe tonight some people are going to get free. You're going to get free financially. You're going to get free mentally, emotionally, spiritually. I mean, we're going to have a great time tonight. We have an awesome uh, worship leader tonight. And um, I mean, just there's going to be some great information out there for you. And I know that God is going to answer some questions. He's going to give some revelation tonight. And he's going to set free. Like I said, he's going to set free. So I want you to just sit back and relax. Join us tonight. Call a friend. Tell them to come on and watch us as we just go all the way in for Jesus tonight, right? I mean, he's about enhancing the, our lives and just setting us free. And speaking of that, right now, James Williams, who is our psalmist tonight, he's going to start off with Free Worshipper. Enjoy it. Word of God says, whom Hallelujah. Yeah. Whom the sun says free is free to me. Hallelujah. Free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship the Lord. Lord, I'm free, free to dance and sing, free to lift my hands and worship, Lord, I'm free, Lord, I'm free, he said I'm free to dance, free to dance and sing, free to lift my hands and worship, Lord.
free indeed. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. Yeah. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, he's got a wonderful voice, and we're going to hear some more from him a little bit later on. Thank you, James. Um, but I have two uh, wonderful women tonight, and I say wonderful because anytime people can uh, focus on the needs of others and help them in their journey to get better, I love that. I just love that. These women are independent insurance agents. They are financial educators. But more than that, they want to help you enhance your life. Because, I mean, God calls us to be good stewards over what he's given us. And he said, much given, much required. And we're waiting for that financial blessing, right? We, we're claiming millionaires and billionaires for the kingdom. Uh, but when it comes, will we know how to use it wisely? All right. So we've got uh, Deborah Fire Davis and Jaspreet Kaur. They are here tonight. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And I'm excited about um, just your journey. I mean, we were talking about that earlier. And um, just sh share for a moment how you know God has influenced you to kind of go down this path. Each of you. Um, what impressed you to get into this? And I think you were talking earlier in your life about uh, when you were at church and, and, and tell us about that now, how you got involved in this from that end. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, um, early in life, I joined the church because music, um, I love singing and I loved to, to hear choirs sing and quartets and uh, singing is what brought me into the church to okay. join. Okay. And from that, I just started just um, being, uh, doing everything in my youth that I could do in the church. I was on the youth uh, usher board. I sung on the choir. And I even was president of a youth or auxiliary um, at church. And the thing about that was I always liked helping people. Okay. And from that, even young, I helped people with like math and whatever mm -hmm. uh, when we were in school. As I got older, I helped people with their credit. Okay. Um, when they mess up their credit, I would show them how to not to fix it and not mess up again. But how did you know how to do that? How did you, at that young age? Well, I mean, and I'm, think, I'm thinking, in my, I'm going forward in my okay. 20s okay. now. Okay. Um, I just knew that you, you should always be a good steward because right. I grew up in the church and I knew that I was taught to, to, to tie the tenth and, uh -huh. and, and, and to save. Right. And from that, I did that. And, and when I would see others mess up, and the thing is, when I graduated from college, I mean, I had credit cards galore because I had A1 credit and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I'd show people how to fix their credit and not mess up again. I said, okay, okay now you pay this off, sure. don't mess it up. So go and sin no more. Go and sin no more, exactly. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, and just from that, that brings me to a time as this. Okay. It brought me into uh, sharing financial um, teaching uh, and, 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 and just basically educating people so that they would know how to have things decent and in order so that when things come up, they would have the proper coverage or leaving a love letter to you with your loved ones if you should make your transition so that when they're grieving, they won't have to go through all that. Everything will be set up, so to speak, yeah. so that they can grieve in peace. Yeah. Um, and but when you say that, and that's interesting because a lot of people, I mean, they're fearful about planning as if planning will bring hasten, mm -hmm. you know, your demise. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But that's not always true. You still have to, I mean, it's appointed and a man wants to die. I mean, so everybody is going to check out of here. Mm -hmm. Right. And but how do, you, how do you stop that fear, you know, of, of the unknown? when you're dealing with the finances in people's lives? You know, basically you look at it like this. It's like, don't you, if, if you want to buy a house or you want to buy a car, don't you kind of put some, some money to the side so that you plan and have some money 
so that you can put a down payment on the house. Mm -hmm. Same thing with life yeah. and, and when life happens, when things happen. You want to have things in place so that you can pull from some source right. that you have set you, aside sure. to take care of you. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be stressing. Because right. when you're stressing on, type, on top of trying to feel better or get better mm -hmm. or heal yourself, all that's doing is delaying the process, yeah. the healing process. Mm -hmm. And Jasper, stress yes. can mess with your health. Yes. Because a lot of people are sick, uh, they have these ailments, not mm -hmm. because um, it's genetic or it was environmental, it was mm -hmm. the stress that they're going through day to day and not being able to handle it. Yeah. Tell us how you got started in, in this business. Yeah, so I think, like you said, stress. That's something I noticed coming from a public health background. Okay. I originally started from a very healthcare setting. And um, I noticed as I was going out into the fields to help these individuals and you know give medical services, there was a lack that I was noticing. And that lack was education okay. and accessibility to resources. And those resources are obviously obtained through having money, through having planning and knowing how to get those resources. So I would always see that there was a gap and I didn't exactly know what my part was gonna be in that at that moment until obviously I was presented an opportunity like, you know, you can go in and learn more. So I educated okay. myself first, learn more about, you know, financial services, how to help people, how do you implement these tools? And then I was like, we need to connect the dots between health and wealth because you can't okay. obtain wealth without having proper health. And so I was able to just bring the two together. And when people have that education, they know where to put what aside. They know what to you know, do with their money. They know how to allocate it. Then when you know, disaster comes or when stress comes, you know where to go and grab what you need in order to get through the times that you're going through. Right, and I'm just reminded, you know, God says that he would have us to prosper and be in health mm -hmm. even as our soul prospers. That, that prosperity is financial, it's emotional, it's physical. Right. Um, and so um, these are very important um, areas that we, we often neglect. Mm -hmm. talk, to, talk to us about some of the challenges um, in saving and, and financial. Why, why is it that we don't save or, or don't plan ahead? Mm -hmm. um, and the name of the company is Elevate Financial. Okay, yes. mm -hmm. tell us, um, why, what are some of the challenges that people have when it comes to saving and yeah. even planning? I think one of the main things that I've noticed is people think that they have a lot of time. They okay. think like, oh, I'll, I'll get to it. I'll do it later. You know, let me focus on just getting the money first. They're not really focused on saving it. They just want to get more of it. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, you're getting it, but out of your paycheck, are you saving? Are you putting something aside each month? Are you taking a little bit, even if it is 10% or 5%, are you putting it aside? I feel like people get very caught in the moment of things and they think, you know, oh, I'll, I'll get to it later. And then when later comes, it's too late. It's too late. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to, you know, start a little early on it, mm -hmm. start planning, be very intentional with it because time is going to come by. It sweeps right. through. Right. It, it sweeps through. It's already been, what, three years since 2020? Like, what? So you have to be very intentional and you know you have your goals that you eventually want to achieve. We, we often put them in a, on a pedestal up here. but you're then separating yourself from that pedestal. You should bring that pedestal sure. to the now. Bring it into the now, integrate it now, take action on it now, so. Yeah, instead of waiting for God to just drop everything in heaven, mm -hmm. you know, maybe what? there's, <laughs> you know, because faith is an action word, right? Faith is, <laughs> yes. faith requires you to do something mm -hmm. and not sitting there. You said, I'm gonna be still, be still and know that I'm God. Okay, I'm gonna be still, but I'm still gonna, he says, if you don't work, you don't eat. So right. <laughs> you gotta do something. Mm -hmm. And um, let me just um, ask you one more time, you, the pandemic was a time of maybe an epiphany for you or yes. you had a revelation yes. during the pandemic. Tell us about that. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone can agree on that. Um, I think everyone, the whole world went through an epiphany moment because mm -hmm. we all were thinking like, this cannot be like real life. This cannot be what real life is about, you know? And so I just remember like schools, you know, we're all at home, everyone, everything's virtual. And I just remember like December of 2020, I'm sitting there like almost, you know, New Year's and I'm like, 
God, this cannot be life. This cannot be all that God has. Like this, this like I know there's more. I just know I can sure. feel it, you know, brewing. And I, I didn't know exactly what that was. And so come 2021, you know, opportunities will present themselves when we're ready for them. And I was ready. Okay. I was ready to elevate. Okay. <laughs> I was ready to rise. I was ready to go. I was like, God, give it to me. Tell me what you got. Whatever it is. One thing I always tell myself is to remain open and have okay. faith. As long as you can do the two, the opportunities are right in front of you. You just got to grab them. And the opportunity came, and I was so grateful for that. And I jumped in, and I was like, let's go. Said, this is what it is. And sometimes we don't know that's our calling, but you have to have that faith because if you feel it in your heart, I asked for this, you know, and it came. So I, I was, all right, let's go. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> and one more thing that you said, um, mm -hmm. you said people listen to you, mm -hmm. to your heart, and not necessarily your mind. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about coming from the heart yes. when, it, when, when you're dealing with things like this. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we can get so uh, emotionally caught up in things. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes, uh, sometimes we, we go overboard with, mm -hmm. with this. Yeah. Um, but there's a good way to balance this and everything that you're talking about in terms of finance and planning and all mm -hmm. of that. Talk about the heart issues. So when it comes to finances, when it comes to, you know, work life, we get very stressed. It's overwhelming. It's a lot, right? We, we, we start to lose kind of almost our center and trying to balance everything. When we're coming from a heart space, the heart is very calm. The heart is very grounded. The heart is very at peace. It's very relaxed. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to tap into that energy. Mm -hmm. And in order to tap into that energy, you have to get out of here. Because mm -hmm. when you're here, everything is chaotic. Everything is going yeah. crazy. You're trying to grasp onto things mentally and then physically we get very like aggressive and you know, just mean and rude and, and it trickles into other no, that's things, right? right? <laughs> road oh, rage. Yeah, road rage. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> listen. <laughs> But when you when you come from the heart space, everything mm -hmm. slows down. Mm -hmm. Everything you're, it starts to click. It starts to make sense. People can really hear you when you speak from your heart. And when you're working with you know financial services, when you're working with things in healthcare, people are stressed out. And if you come and mirror that back to them with the same stress, sure. you're not going to make a difference, mm -hmm. right? If you want to see a smile in the mirror, you have to be the one yeah. smiling first. Good. So I always make sure I'm smiling first in my heart and that will, you know, trickle into the world with what I'm dealing with. I'll put a smile on right. their face as well. So it's very important to get out of here, our head space and get into our heart space. Heart space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I've heard it said, well, and, and I've seen it too. It's like if there's somebody that is um, needing something, they are struggling or, or they're hungry, um, and you're trying to share the word of God with them, but they're hungry, but you're trying to preach them. First, you need to connect with them in terms of what their need is, right? right. And then you can go and minister, because mm -hmm. even that in itself is ministry, just exactly. uh, meeting that need. So what do you find are some of the greatest needs of the people that you work with? Because you have a company called Ujama. I'm sorry, Rise Ujama Incorporated. Yes. Talk to us about that company because part of that partnership is with Elevate Financial. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, Rise Ujama Incorporated uh, was derived from the Swahili word Ujama, which is cooperative economics. Okay. And with cooperative economics, what we do is unite with other. Uh, companies and uh, organizations, if you will, that will help to raise, uh, help people rise above their circumstances okay. and teach them and educate them as to how they can soar like an eagle mm -hmm. as, as far as just managing their finances, if you will, okay. and getting everything in order so that they don't have to struggle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Just educate the person. And if you're, if you're in front of a person and they're hungry, feed them. Yeah. And educate them while you're feeding educate them. them. while you feed them. Then they're not focusing on being hungry. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, the thing. Because you really can't pay attention. Mm -hmm. If and your you stomach is your growling. Heart because your head is, it's yeah, at the two get <laughs> mixed up. Okay, so talk about now, where, what are some of the, you have any upcoming events with Elevate Financial or... 
What do you have going on right now? Yeah, so we do a lot of educational mm -hmm. seminars and literacy seminars. Um, we are planning one in April right now. Oh, okay. So we're still putting everything together, but we focus on just having at least events every month, if not every other month, or if we're not having a liter literacy seminar, we're focused on training, okay. focus on bettering ourselves, we're focused on learning more about our products, learning more about ways to enhance people's lives. Um, and so we do a lot of um, work with organizations outside of financial services. So like we work with like youth centers or churches, um, wherever we're, we're called or wherever we're needed. Mm -hmm. okay. And Ujama, Rise Ujama, what are your plans for, what are the plans for the rest of 2023? To touch as many lives as possible. <laughs> okay. And to help and empower individuals mm -hmm. and small businesses, if you will, to rise above the circumstances and soar. The thing is, I want to empower them mm -hmm. so that they will have a vehicle or tools in place mm -hmm. that will help them uh, just have life just be more decent and in order. In order. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. What's the greatest challenge you find now as somebody who works business to business? What do you find businesses right now? What's their greatest need? <laughs> <laughs> Maintaining, retaining uh, sure. their, their employees. Okay. Um, wow, that's good. Yeah, because a lot of the small businesses is what I work with a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of them don't have the benefits needed to retain, retain them. employees. Mm -hmm. And if, if we can come in and educate them and teach them and show them uh, voluntary services where they don't, the employer doesn't have any out-of-pocket cost, that will help to, okay. to um, at least retain employees okay. at this time. Yeah, because it's almost like a revolving door. And exactly. that was part from the pandemic. You know, people got used to being at home, not having to pay for gas and mm -hmm. working out of the convenience of their house. And, you know, if you want to wear your um, pajamas or... <laughs> <laughs> On the bottom. <laughs> right, you know, so I definitely understand that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how can people reach you? And then after that, how can they reach you if they want to uh, book you or find out more information? Well, basically, they can go to www.riseujamainc.com dot com okay. and see all of the services that are available and they can book a consultation okay. and I can actually get back with them. Rise Ujama Inc. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, for me, it's elevatefinancial.co. Okay. Um, it has a list of all of our services. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, it says, let's connect. And then mm -hmm. you just go in and book a call and I'll be there for you. Wow. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for empowering us today. Jazz Preet and Deborah. Uh, we enjoyed it so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we've got James Williams coming again with Worth Fighting For. You met me deep in my despair to show me you would never leave me there. You claimed because I was made for so much more i am a child and i'm worth fighting for so heavy with the weight of my mistakes you carry me and refuse to let me sink under the pressure you meant for me to soar i am your child and i'm worth fighting for Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard All you have planned for me And nothing can separate me from your love When there's so much more still worth fighting for Now I'm moving by pain By the power of your might, you claim because I was made for so much more. I am a child, and I'm worth fighting for. Eyes haven't seen, no. ears haven't heard, no. all you have planned for me. And nothing, no nothing. Heaven, 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 Heaven,
That's why I'm pressing towards the mark so Because the calling on my life is worth fighting for And I'll keep my mind stays on you see Because the peace it brings is worth fighting for You know this world is not my home Because the calling on my life It's worth fighting for Hallelujah It's worth it Hallelujah It's so worth it Hallelujah Life with you is worth fighting My name is Claudette Jude, and I worship at Greater Power International Ministry in McDonough, Georgia, under the leadership of Pastor Colleen Pierce. Currently, we're not in a building. We are on Zoom. And we have prayer. We're in the prayer room tonight at WATC. And every month, we're here on the fourth Wednesday. Now, we just had a call from Tyrone that's asking for breakthrough. So give us a call. And while we are here, we want to ask you to pray with me tonight. Romans 10, 9 to 10 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We also got to receive the call from Miss, Miss Tony. And she's asking for prayer for her grandchildren. So call us tonight, 770-300-9829. I'm sorry, 770-300-9828. Now we're back to the studio. Thank you. All right, welcome back. Well, I have a man of God here that um, he just goes forth. I mean, he's doing what God has called him to do. He is ministering and preaching. He is associate pastor uh, with All Things Well Ministries. And we're just excited to speak to him today about what God is doing in his life and for the people of God. Welcome, Pastor Walter Marshall. How are you Thank doing? Thank you. Thank you so much, Kay, for having me on tonight. It's just been uh, an honor just to be here um, on tonight and just to share uh, just a portion of who I am, my story, and how God has just blessed my life and how I even got started in the ministry and God's just pushed through. So okay. it's just uh, an amazing, amazing thing. So, All right. Well, how did you get started, sir? Um, really, I uh, grew up in church. Uh, so my dad was a preacher. He was a preacher then, pastor now. And then my grandfather was a pastor as well. So I had the best of both worlds uh, in two different denominations at that time. But um, we pushed through. And um, I did church, as most people do. I, I grew up, church. I did church, okay. but it wasn't until um, I, I was in my boot camp. I was in boot camp, uh, Marine Corps, who okay. out for those that are out there, servicemen. Uh, Army. Oh, okay. Well, no, I was okay. Army brat. <laughs> okay, so Army okay. Brat. Yeah. But um, with that, um, it was in that moment in boot camp that where I was a, a troubled kid and went through some, some things growing up and um, really ha held on to some feelings, some harbored, some real ill feelings in my heart, but it was one night night uh, as I was um, winding down for throughout the day uh, in boot camp, believe that or not, but winding down and um, 
I, I, God just began to speak to me. I always carried my Bible because I knew the, the, the church and my grandfather had given me the Bible, so I knew the right so thing knew, to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like most of us do, we know the right thing to do, but it's about applying the right thing. Okay. So uh, in that, I just had an encounter with him. And God just began to press upon my heart in that moment to forgive. Okay. And that was the jump start of my life and my ministry with him. Oftentimes, we go through life just living. Um, I spoke this morning um, just about being spiritually asleep, spiritually yeah. asleep. But it was in that moment that God just uh, woke me up and I began just to forgive. Okay. And that began that journey with me. So, and yeah. it's interesting you talk about uh, forgiveness. Um, I was at an event last week mm -hmm. and uh, the person that was speaking was talking about Goliaths. Yes. The Goliaths in your life. Yes. And she listed five Goliaths in her life. And then as we were rounding out, I was like, you know what? There is a major Goliath that a lot of us deal with, which is unforgiveness. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. one point we think we have gotten right. over it. Right. And then something happens and yes. triggers it. Some memory. Yes. You see something or yes. somebody looked at you the wrong way. And next <laughs> thing you know, bam. Right. It's like you're reliving it all over yes. again. But forgiveness actually jump-started your ministry. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, when you were saying that about forgiveness, because oftentimes we've mastered suppression. We've mastered yeah. suppression. We have suppressed so much and that we think that it has gone away. But for me, it was in that moment that God just says, if you don't forgive, the scripture says that if you don't forgive, yep. your father in heaven won't forgive, won't you. forgive you. It's one of the most dangerous scriptures, Hello. The most scariest scriptures yeah. in the Bible, one of them. But uh, it was in that moment. And I begin uh, in that moment, I begin to write. Um, uh, we've we've uh, settled our differences. Me and my dad are now like best friends. And I'm, I'm trying to help some men out here that are really harboring some things against their fathers. Mm -hmm. And it was in that moment that I began to write out everything, everything that I was hurting from, from him. And from that moment, freedom came. Mm -hmm. Freedom came and um, God just began just to pour into me and he began uh, to show me his love. Okay. There is nothing like our heavenly father's love. And in that, that has brought me literally up to this point of just launching out and just um, um, really just enhance and going after people that are lost, going after people that are, that, that are, that are unchurched, going after people with uh, church hurt, mm. uh, going after those that says, you know what, I can't do this anymore, I'm not, but I just wanna introduce you to a man that loves you. Mm -hmm. Introduce you to a man that says, I look beyond all of your faults and I'll still meet your needs. Mm -hmm. The one that, the, the man that says that I, 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 I specialize in using flawed people. Yeah. And so that's the man I, I try to introduce, I do introduce those two that are, that are just, whether you're on Facebook, social media, wherever, wherever I'm at. Who I am is who I am everywhere. everywhere. Not just on a Sunday morning. Not just morning. on a Sunday. Come on. So Monday through Saturday. That Monday this through is, Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's Monday through Monday. Monday through Monday. Hey, okay. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. All right. And so um, I want to talk to you for a moment about the live events. You do a lot of um, live yes. events. You yes. minister live. And I mean, I mean, I think that's a result, a lot of it. it from the pandemic, we realized. Yes. So any, anybody that was not familiar with how to do a Zoom or how to do a Facebook Live or yes. Instagram, everybody got that knowledge. Yes. And so, um, but now it, it's, it's like it's integrated into our lives now. Yes. Where you've got some online, you've got some offline. Yes. But a um, majority of what you do is online. Tell us about um, your mm -hmm. online Absolutely. Churches, Absolutely. Serv services. Yeah. So um, Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, I'm on live with our, on Facebook and on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And with that, um, early on during the pandemic, God has just uh, given me assignment to reach those, to encourage those, knowing that everything that was going on through the pandemic, right? Um, people were needed, uh, people were discouraged, people were scared, people were in fear. And God just began just to birth, to encourage. Mm -hmm. um, I started out, uh, it was the week of Easter, and I, I begin just to walk down the days, to begin to explain people, leaving out of the Good Friday and um, launching out uh, from the triumphal entry and what happened on that Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday up until uh, the moment that they put him on the cross mm -hmm. until he rose again that following Sunday morning. So it was through that 
that I just uh, kept going. And God just began just to give me small assignments. It started off small. The Bible says, do not despise the day right, right. of small beginnings. And with that, it has grown. It has grown. And um, I'm seeing people from from all over the nation okay. and, and pre pretty much all over the world that have just joined in. They, they chime in on every, mo uh, every, every morning mm -hmm. that I'm on it. Uh, so with that, yeah, that's what, that's what birthed yeah. the, the pandemic, really just launched that out with the assignment that God had given me. So yeah. absolutely. People are hungry. They're thirsty. Oh, yes. For words. Yes. And, um, yes. I mean, if you've got life, you know, if Jesus would, that's life. Yes. And you're ministering life. So yeah. um, it's he always is the bread of be. life. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Talk about some of the most influential pastors or ministers in your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the most uh, really outside of, you know, the, the big names that are out there, it's really those that are local that have really touched my life, mm -hmm. that have really just poured into me, uh, whether it had been, you know, Andy Stanley at North Point Community or whether it had been uh, Pastor Jackie Jenkins at Focus Ministries. Mm -hmm. But right now, currently, it's been uh, Apostle DeMonte Edmonds um, here. These are all local Atlanta people um, that that I've been you know able to touch tangibly um, whether it's um, uh, prophet um, Octavius Miller you know Keisha and Jonathan Smith uh, Sam Littleton and he's over at um, Apostle the Ryan Lestrange's in Alpharetta so it's just these key people that have really have just breathe just a, a wisdom and knowledge and the know-how to work um, and just to go out and reach people, whether it's through the prophetic, whether it's through, uh, you know, miracle signs and wonders, mm -hmm. whether it's through healings, um, you know, uh, I think of, you know, first one comes Apostle John uh, McKinney, just John Michael McKinney is mm -hmm. just one of them. So it's just th these different people, local people that have made the biggest impact, that has been the most influential, you know, outside of the big names. Sure. So it's just those, those are the ones this that I just draw. Yes. They, don't have, they don't have to be all over the country, right? No, they right? don't. And no. My pastor, and one thing I love about my pastor, she says, you know what, I put, I put faith walk ministers up against anybody, you know. Absolutely. And it, to say that, you know, that anointing, Come you know, um, it, it, it can be inclusive to so many. Right. You know, and that, that God just, he said he would pour out his spirit on all, all flesh. All flesh, yes. So, yeah, definitely. So they have been just instrumental to, you know, keeping me going and just, you know, pouring into me and speaking life, even in the moments that I wanted to give up, even in the moments that I just said, you know what, it's all for naught and I just want to throw in it. No, you keep going. Stay on the assignment. Stay on the Stay wall. On Stay on the wall. Yes. All right. So talk about some of your past and then your upcoming events that you are going to be having. <laughs> okay. We just had a phenomenal, phenomenal weekend. Right. Um, this past weekend, we were up in uh, Belleville, Illinois, all things well through a, a three-day conference. Okay. Um, there in Illinois? Yes. Talk about, so, Bel so all things well, which you're will, associate pastor. Yes. Okay. You're here, but they have a main church in Chic um, in Belleville, Belleville, Illinois. Yeah. Illinois. Okay. So they're, they're based out of Belleville, Illinois. I'm here in Atlanta, uh, one of the branches here in Atlanta. Um, so with that, we had a conference okay. in, in um, Belleville, Illinois, and that conference was amazing. It was wow. one of the very first times that me, personally me, and I, I'm transparent, I'm open like that, that I really had an encounter with God that we're the sound of God mm -hmm. entered the room. Mm -hmm. um, it was a Thursday night and the worship leader Triv got up and began to just worship. And the spirit of God really began to move. Mm -hmm. um, throughout that whole weekend from Friday ending on Saturday morning, um, all that were there, all that were in attendance were, um, were just moved by the spirit of God. The name of that conference was Pursuit of His Presence. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you that from the smallest, I'm talking little kids, mm -hmm. um, broke out in, in, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm getting excited. Okay. I'm starting to rock now <laughs> in my chair. But, uh, <laughs> but with that, um, it was a move like never before. Okay. And it was all of the names that I just mentioned that they were there. And it was just, it was just a, an authentic, pure move. And so that was an event that we'll re be bringing to here, Georgia, very, very soon uh, within the next few months that we're going to redo that, try to um, bring that same, that same experience here um, for, for our Georgia family. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And then also um, 
the events that I, I do every quarter, uh, we just did one just a few weeks ago, uh, we go out and feed the homeless. Mm -hmm. And we go out and minister to those that are down on, um, down in downtown Atlanta and those that are on the West End and those that are on the East Side and those that are all over the city that are homeless. And we do it once a quarter. Uh, you know, God willing that he'll increase that, we'll be out there. But it's our time to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the streets. Right. To, to take it outside of the four walls of the, of, of the church that we've, you know, sometimes we become so inwardly. But this is the time in the season that we need to become outwardly yeah. and begin to show people. Um, Paul speaks about power and demonstration. Um, we got a lot of power and demonstration going on in the church, in but we need to take it out on the outside of the walls, four walls, in the, in, in the street. And so that people can know that we serve a, a, a living God, that God, the God that we serve, he loves them and he cares for them. And, and even though that they may be flawed individuals, even though that they may be broken and hurting, he is the master potter. He is the one that will put us back together again. Okay, I'll, I'll start preaching in here a minute, but okay. that's, that, that is my passion to, is to go out and to reach those. That is my passion to go out and to let those know. So many times people leave wounded and hurt um, and, and God has just assigned me and I know many others that he's done it too but it's just to show him show those his love just to continues to pour in him his love because God is his love he is love mm -hmm. absolutely yes Do you believe there is revival breaking out in the land I believe revival is here okay I believe revival is here and it's here for those for the taking um, the posture of, of revival is surrender. Once we surrender, oftentimes that when uh, we go into these church services, we want our agenda. Mm -hmm. I, I, when I say I just experienced this, but when we remove ourselves from the agenda, when we say, God, have your way, that's when revival breaks out. Um, the Bible tells us that he look, he's looking for those to worship him in spirit and in truth mm -hmm. and in truth um, oftentimes we aren't even true to ourselves mm -hmm. and we just if we come to him open my motto if you listen to me every morning just come to him with open hands and an open heart, open heart. and God will begin to cause revival right where you are you don't need to be in a church setting yeah. I've seen revival break out in homes oh, yeah. I've seen revival break out uh, on the streets mm -hmm. I've seen revival break out just anywhere you allow God and and I know God has the ability to do all things, right? But for revival, you have to allow him to come in. So yes, allow him. So I believe that wholeheartedly. All right. It is definitely breaking out in, uh, in a lot of places that I've seen. Um, hearts are just changing, like Jess Preet was saying. It, it, yes. it really begins here. Yes. Minister to my heart, you know. Um, and, and I don't know. I just... Revival, it, it, yeah, it's for us as the believer, but it's meant to be shared. It's, it, it, it comes so we can be empowered to go out. I mean, yes. and when you talk about just constantly sometimes keeping it in the four walls, I mean, mm -hmm. yes, I mean, yes, we can have church. We can have a mighty move of God in the church, but what are we doing with that? Yes. We, with that power. You know, some of us, we've been in the church so long, we're so full. Right. We're so full right. of the word. I mean, we can quote it back and forth, left right. and right. But I don't know. I just, um, there's a movement now outside of the walls. And hey, maybe the pandemic had something to do with that because in the pandemic, the, you know, churches were shut down. Right. And maybe God was saying, hey. But I think God leveled the playing field. Yeah, he sure did. I think God leveled the playing field. Mm -hmm. That it was a moment of a whosoever will moment. Yeah. Whosoever will, let him come. And whoever had a voice that was willing to listen mm -hmm. and hear the voice of God. The Bible tells us, he that has an ear, let him, let him hear yeah. what the Spirit is saying to the church. And the church is us. Yeah. And what was the Spirit saying? He was saying, still go forth. Still go forth. Still go forth and, and reach I think, those. And I thank God for all the opportunities that, that we had to do that, that we learned Absolutely. to do that. We had to adapt. Yes. For those that rejected, um, that we, we didn't want to do things a certain way. We had right. to do it this way. God made it so that we had no other choice. Yes. But to convey it via social media or via Zoom or some other places that right. we ordinarily didn't want to. And one thing you said, which is one thing that I adapted during, uh, adopted during the pandemic was that um, I broadcasted more, 
ministered more yes. from that place of, you know, just maybe just sitting in my home, ministering, prophesying, yeah. interacting real time yes. yeah. um, because people were hurting. Yes. And that was something that I felt in my heart that people were really hurting yeah. and they couldn't go anywhere. So, but they were on social media. Yeah. So that was yeah. a great time for people to share Absolutely. the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So tell us, how can someone reach, to, reach you if they want to book you or Absolutely. they want you to be a part um, of it? I am on Facebook. You okay. can reach me on Facebook. Um, just, my, just my name, Walter Marshall. Wow. I just, just so simple. <laughs> I just wanted to keep it simple. You could do that. Find me on YouTube. Um, the best way to catch me or the best way to reach me is through Facebook at this okay. moment. Um, and just, you know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm available, you'll see me, you'll scroll through and all you'll see is every day that I'm on there. But primarily right now, it's just Facebook and Messenger and that information, so absolutely. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you thank you for the work that you're doing thank in you. God's kingdom, thank you. All right, we've got another selection by James Williams entitled, Turning Around For Me. <laughs> Discouraged, but not defeated. Cast down, but not destroyed. There are times I don't understand, but I believe it's turning around. I've had struggles and disappointments. There are times I felt so alone. Some of my friends, they let me down. But I believe it's turning around. Around for me, around for me, around for me, turning around for me. Cause I can see the breaking, I can see the breaking of day. God is, God is making the way, a change, a change is coming for if I stand strong, if I stand strong and believe, there's no, there's reason, no to doubt. reason to doubt. I know He's know working, he's it, working out. it out, and it's turning around, it's turning around for, for me. me. Here's the good news, because it won't always be that I. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. And sooner or later, it'll turn in my favor. Son of man, that he 
God is turning it around for your good. Thank you so much for that selection. And we're going to hear one more selection by James. We want to thank you for joining us tonight on Atlanta Live. And um, I know God has blessed you tonight. Uh, he's doing some marvelous, wonderful things. And I just thank God for all of our guests that uh, came on and blessed us tonight, that they shared their hearts they shared what they do for the kingdom of God. And it's all really about God's kingdom. If you confess Jesus as Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so I want you to just take that opportunity to confess Jesus, to follow him and say yes to his way, yes to his will, and be about the Lord's business in this hour because God is looking for you to do just that. And we're going to close out tonight with another selection by James William entitled Marvelous. God is marvelous. God bless you. See you soon. I will sing your praise for you have done such a marvelous thing. For someone so wretched, yet my soul you have redeemed. No one else could do it. No one could care as much. Yet you thought my soul was worth it. So you gave your only
in exchange. Exchange your life for mine. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful 